My name's Michelle Harrison and this is my new book, A Sprinkle of Sorcery. It's the second adventure of the Widdershin sisters. Um, if you know anything about the word Widdershins, it means unlucky, and that's certainly the case for these sisters. Uh, the story begins when they find a stranger hiding out in their back garden one night, and um, this person is being chased by the prison warders. Uh, so they make a snap decision to help this person and hide them in the pub where they live. And after that, there's a case of mistaken identity, which leads to an adventure that takes them away from Crowstone, over the marshes, um, to a shipwreck with treasure and pirates and vengeful ghosts. Uh, I really enjoyed writing it and I hope you enjoy reading it too. I'm here at Waterstones Piccadilly, London, to talk about three of my favourite books, um, which in some way shaped my own work. The first one is um, Enid Blyton's Five Go to Smuggler's Top. I read these books over and over again as a child um, and a thing I really love about them, apart from secret passages um, and adventure, is the, the way that they go back to time that's quite innocent and the children have to rely on their wits and their smarts to get them out of pickles, um, which is something that's a little bit difficult when writing for today's audience when there's so much technology. Um, and that's something that I try to put into my own work. Um, so this is a story, as you would guess by the title, all about smugglers. Um, and it was the one that I probably read the most as a child. So we're now in the young adult section. And um, the next book I want to talk about is A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness and Siobhan Dowd. Um, this is a story about a boy called Connor who has gone to live with his grandmother because his mum is very ill. Um, she's in a very serious stage of her illness and they're kind of trying everything uh, to see if they can keep her alive. Um, and while all this is going on, Connor's obviously very angry and sad, um, but then something really weird happens at his grandmother's house. Um, his, his new room overlooks a churchyard where there's an ancient yew tree which is steeped in myth and legend and folklore. And he starts to be visited at night by this, this uh, monster in the form of the yew tree, which tells him three stories. Um, and these stories are quite magical and otherworldly and they really take you into another place. Um, and I really love the idea of a story within a story, which is something that I've put into my own work with the Widdershins um, and a pinch of magic and a sprinkle of sorcery. It's an amazing book um, and I highly recommend it, but you will need some tissues. I cried for about half an hour after I finished reading it. So I'm here on the fourth floor in Piccadilly. Um, the third book that I want to talk about is The Magpie and the Wardrobe. This is a really nice book. It's full of superstition and folklore. Um, not only has it got lots of information, but it's got lovely illustrations um, and photographs. So there's a lot of inspiration in there. If you're a bit of a magpie like me, um, there's a lot in there if you just want to leaf through for a few ideas. Um, I've used this quite a lot to dip into with the Widdishins stories because uh, the granny in the story is very superstitious, um, which is something that really annoys Betty, the main character. But I really enjoyed digging through this and unearthing all these strange, half-forgotten superstitions um, and bits of folklore and kind of weaving my own take on them as well as making up a few of my own. This is a really nice one.